Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is part 5 of a video series on frequency distribution in histograms. And again, thank you to Vicki Borlaug for allowing us to use her PowerPoint. And we're picking up right where we left off. We're going to look at an example that will require us to create our own classes from the directions given. First, we need to find the highest and lowest links of parts from our data. We have a list of data that includes links of parts. And we need to find the lowest and the highest data values. When creating our classes, we need to first find the lowest value. And in our data, that will be 125.5. And the highest data value, which will be 151.6 inches. When creating our classes, the lowest class must begin at or below the 125.5. And the highest class must end at or above 151.6. Those are important things to remember. Part B asks us to build classes using 125.0 for the first lower class limit and 4.5 for the class width. With those two pieces of information, we can build a, a set of classes. We like numbers ending in 5 and 0 because they are easier to count with, but we don't always use those numbers. So we know that the fir we know what the first lower limit is. It told us. So we'll use 125.0 for the lower class first lower class limit. Now, how can I use this number to build the rest of our classes? Remember, we also know our class width. With that information, we can find the lower last cl class limit of class 2. Using the 4.5 for the class width, and adding it to the 125, that would give us 129.5, and that will be the next lower class limit. Then we can proceed and add 4.5 to 129.5 to give us the next lower class limit of 134.0. Adding 4.5 again to 134.0, we will get 138.5. To 138.5, we'll add 4.5. That gives us a lower class limit of 143.0. To 143.0 we will add 4.5 the class width and that will give us the next lower class limit of 147.5. That is not greater than 151.6 so we still need another class limit so we'll add 4.5 again to 147.5 and that gives us 152.0. Since 152 is greater than 151, we are finished. That is how we know when to stop our classes or when we have enough classes. We knew that 125 was a good place to start because it is lower than this first or lowest class 
our lowest data item, not our lowest class, but our lowest data item. And we know that we need to go up for this class at 147.5 and 152 we don't need to start with this one because it's above the 151.6 so we can since it's higher since the highest value is 151.6 we do not need a class that starts at 152 so we can mark that out but notice we don't want to mark it out where we can't see it we want to still be able to read it because it may be useful to us hint hint in the next slide okay now the raw data has one decimal place so we want a upper class limit is 0.1 less than the next lower class limit. So we want a 0.1 gap between the classes. If you haven't watched the previous videos on this PowerPoint, then we covered this in more detail there. But that's the gap that we need so that no data fall between two classes without making the gap smaller than it needs to be. Now we can proceed to make and create the upper class limits by taking one-tenth from 129.5 and getting 129.4 and proceed to do that for every number along the list. And I'm not going to read those numbers out to you. Um, you can do so um, and see those for yourself. But as you get to the last one, we take 147.5 and subtract 1 tenth, and we get 147.4. That will give us 152, and that's where we can use the 152 to create this last upper class limit. Even though it's not going to be our a class in itself, we can use it to create that upper class limit of our last class. And that's the way to create, one way to create upper class limits. The raw data, whoops. Now, another way to do this is to find the first upper class limit the same way as we did before. Of 129.4 but instead of doing that tenth subtracting is to go back and use the class width of 4.5 and add 4.5 to each previous upper class limit to create those upper class limits all the way down. Either way that we do that is fine we still end up with the same answers. and we have our classes. Now we're ready to do part C, which asks us to construct a frequency distribution, a relative frequency distribution, a percent frequency distribution, and a histogram. We have done this in previous two previous examples, so I'm going to cover this relatively quickly in this video. First we will want to do the columns and label those. And since we have our classes, we can do our tally. Ta-da! The tally is done. We can turn the tally marks into frequency. 5, 1, 5, 1, 4, 2. Then we can turn the frequency into relative frequency. Remember that relative frequency takes the frequency and compares by division to the total number of the data set. So for the first class we have 5 divided by 18 which gives us 0.2788. We will want to take this out four decimal places. Um, I will explain more as we go on as to why we like to do that and when we get to the percent distribution or the percent frequency. 
The next one will be 1 over 18, which equals 0 0.0556. 5 over 18 gives us 0 0.2778. 1 over 18 equals 0 0.0556. 4 over 18 is equal to 0 0.2222. And 2 over 18, which is equal to 0 0.1111. And unlike previous examples, these were repeating non-ending decimals, so we rounded to the four decimal places. Now we're ready to complete the percent frequency distribution column. To do this, we want to change the relative frequency decimal to a percent by moving our decimals two places to the right. We want to have two places after the decimal for our percent accuracy and so we need four decimals, four decimal places in our decimals, which is why we rounded. Your rounding may vary from teacher to teacher, so please check with your teacher. In our case, that then gives us 27.78%. 5.56%, 27.78%, 25.56%, and 22.22%, .22%, and 11.11%. .11%. And that completes the percent frequency distribution. Now let's draw our histogram. Place your axis and notice the labels. The horizontal labels excuse me, the horizontal axis is labeled with classes. Remember that your teacher may do this differently, so please check with him or her. The vertical axis is labeled with the frequency. Our highest frequency is 5, so we need something as large or larger than 5, and because it's a relatively small number, we'll count up by 1s. Next, draw the rectangles and bars for each class. The first class has a frequency of 5, so the height of the first bar will be 5, and will look like this. The second one has a height, a frequency of 1, so that bar has a height of 1 then a height of 5 for the next bar, then 1, then 4, then 2. Notice that each, how each histogram in this series has a different shape, and we'll talk about that in Part 6. I've already surpassed my 10-minute mark that I'm supposed to be aiming for, and as much as I would like to continue and talk about shapes now, we will stop here, and even though I said it was going to be a five-part series, it turns out that this is going to be a six-part series. Please watch the sixth part as well, because there's some interesting things about the shape of histograms on the part six. Thank you for watching, and I hope this this video was helpful in knowing how to create the classes.